Dear colleagues, it's a pleasure to welcome you today for this uh, new session of uh, ESO online. It will be dedicated entirely to prostate cancer for this first video of 2022. I'm surrounded by top experts in the field and uh, I will uh, present the faculty. Uh, I have asked Carbemir from Valencia in Spain to uh, be there. She's ESO board member. Uh, I have asked Arnaud uh, Albert uh, to come from Rotterdam. Thank you very much and uh, Noel Clark from Manchester. Uh, thank you for uh, being there. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to the last part of this uh, as our online session, looking ahead, look, looking into the future and uh, how to incorporate the results of the molecular imaging uh, into the practice, especially when it comes to uh, treatment of prostate cancer. So we are listening to you. Thank, thank you. you. Um, so I'm going to talk about locally advanced and oligometastatic prostate cancer and address this question as to whether we should treat the primary and add systemic therapy. And uh, this is clearly in high-risk M0 and in M1 disease. Um, I have some conflicts of interest and uh, particularly the academic conflicts. Uh, I'm a PI of the Stampede Radicals and Propel trials. Now, this is a population graph which will give you some indication of how common high-risk M0 disease is in your country. Um, the UK has about 68 million and this is the National Prostate Cancer Audit data um, for England and Wales which is about 60 to 62 million of which we get between 42 and 52 thousand cases annually and we record every one of them um, in a way like this. Now this funnel plot, which you see on your right as you look at the screen, represents the high-risk localised prostate cancer cases, and each dot on that funnel plot represents a major centre in a city uh, in England or Wales. And from those patients, we have got good data. And we can see from 2018-2019 that um, of the 14,000 who had high-risk localised disease, about three-quarters received radical treatment mostly with radiotherapy and ADT, and about 10% with radical prostatectomy. Now this, at the time of 2018-2019, was the standard of care. Natural history in lymph node positive and high-risk localised disease. This is from Stampede, published in 2015, on a substantial number of patients from the control arm. And you can see in purple at the top is the mortality with standard of care. That's about one in five patients die of their disease by five years, and about 50% of the patients will have failed, either clinically or biochemically or both, within that time period. So to this question, what is the standard of care? Well, let me deal with this question of primary presenting M1 disease. We published in 2018, as part of the Stampede study, uh, the effects of treatment of the primary metastatic disease and we showed that treatment of the primary was effective only if there was low burden disease and this matched the data which had come from a smaller trial in Holland, the HORAD trial, um, which had a very similar uh, hazard ratio for its uh, uh, results and we combined that data in a meta-analysis published. Now following on from that, these two Research fellows, Adnan Ali and Alex Hoyle, working at the Christie in Manchester on the Stampede data, categorised this in great detail and had done all the work on that 2018 paper. And what you see here is the treatment effect uh, in relation to plots for bone metastasis count. If you look at the left, you can see overall survival. And if you look at the x-axis, one, two, three, four, etc., that simply is the number of metastases counted on the bone scan and you can look at the hazard ratio and in the middle is the hazard ratio of one so above one is worse and below one is better you can see that as you reach the level of four then you start to lose the effect of treatment of the primary and this defines treatment burden for metastatic disease um, you can see that it's a linear correlate and it's not uh, a, a dichotomous correlate we've gone on to publish the long-term outcome uh, from Stampede, the H arm, which is radiotherapy to the primary metastatic disease. And the results are maintained. In other words, the survival benefit is absolutely clear. And I should emphasize that the bone scan is predictive of outcome. It's not prognostic. That's the only predictive biomarker we have currently. Uh, 
So the standard of care in M1 CAP for low burden disease, as defined by conventional imaging, is ADT and radiotherapy to the primary site. So what about M0, N0, and M0, N+, high-risk localized disease? We've got a very good um, portfolio of trials, phase three trials, looking at the standard of care. Now on the bottom right, you see a pyramid. And that pyramid is a hierarchy of evidence. At the top, randomized controlled trials and meta-analyses, and at the bottom, case series and case reports. So in radiotherapy, with combination treatment, we have level one evidence, very clear. That is a standard of care. For surgery, it's the opposite. We're at the bottom of the pyramid. Editorials, case series, and some good cohort studies, but no randomized trials of any note. But despite this, it's still in the guidelines for the EAU that radical prostatectomy is an option. This is the only real randomized trial we have. This is what's called the Messing trial. It's very famous, it's very well done, ahead of its time when it was first done, but it's very small. If you look at the 98 men randomized, it really is way underpowered to reach any conclusion. But notwithstanding that, this is what happens on the international uh, circuit. This is a paper we've just published from the National Prostate Cancer Audit, and you should look at the histogram with the blue arrows. This is the high-risk localized prostate cancer cohort, and you can see the difference between England and the US. And these are really quite large numbers, so we have just over uh, 109,000 from the SEER database in the US, and um, over 74,000 from the NPCA database. In the US, about half of these patients have been treated with surgery. In the UK, it's about 10% roughly. Um, so when asked the question, well, of those patients treated with surgery, what else do they get when they're really high risk? And is this appropriate treatment? So to the next question, should high risk patients receive dose taxal chemotherapy? Now, this is the JETUG-12 trial, which I'd advise you to read. It's published in the JAMA Oncology uh, from May 2019. And it really is how to run a trial, and it emphasizes what I said earlier, which is you need to be patient to find out what the true outcome is, which is that 12 years for radiological progression-free survival and overall survival, there really is not much difference. So dose taxal, not effective in that group of patients. This has been consolidated by the M0 data from Stampede, uh, which we presented, and th we've got this paper in submission. A shorter time period than JETUG-12, but at six and a half years, the hazard ratio is virtually identical. There's really no benefit to dose taxal. So I think we can say with some degree of confidence that in the M0 setting, whether node positive or negative, dose taxal is not an effective drug. Now contrast this with the paper published in The Lancet in uh, December 2021. This is the combination of standard of care radiotherapy and ADT with novel hormone agents, either given alone, abiraterone, or in combination, abiraterone and enzalutamide. And we've been able to combine the data from these two consecutively running arms of Stampede to produce a meta-analysis of metastasis-free survival, which is what you see in curve A on the left of the screen. And you can see the standard of care which is ADT plus radiotherapy, is much inferior in metastasis-free survival to the combination when added with ADT plus abiraterone and ADT plus abiraterone and then zalutamide. And if you look at the table on the right, you can see that this is effective across the board with N0, N plus, older plus younger patients, um, and so on. It really does work. Now, the big difference um, when we look carefully at the prostate cancer-specific survival, which you can see on the left with a hazard ratio of 0 0.49, uh, is that the combination treatment virtually halves uh, the risk of prostate cancer death. And that's with ADT and radiotherapy plus the combination of novel hormone agents for a two-year period. This is not lifelong, it's two years. Now, when asked the question, should we consider Abby and Enza or just abiraterone alone, what we also found uh, was that the combination was much more toxic and predominantly with hypertension. And there was no real added benefit to adding the two novel hormone agents. So the standard of care, which is now for the future, in my view, 
is that patients with high-risk clinically localized disease, and I emphasize clinically localized on the basis of standard imaging, is treatment with ADT radiotherapy to the primary, plus nodes, and a novel hormone agent in the form of abiraterone. I suspect enzalutamide will work in just the same way. And that, I think, is the state of the world as it stands. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. I think that Stampede was a real game changer in the field. Oh. Uh, you mentioned also that uh, in our practice, the cost of the drug in our country is likely to decrease uh, very, uh, very soon. Uh, does it make any, I would say, uh, difference for your choice of uh, prescription? Well, this, this will be a huge game changer because uh, currently in my country, um, it, it costs about somewhere around 2,800 euros per month to prescribe abiraterone. And when that becomes generic, as it will this year, it will be very much cheaper. Mm. And so I don't think there will be any question that it will be prescribed much more widely. Thank you. Arnold, would, would you like to elaborate uh, on the message uh, sent by... Uh, uh, well, I, the, the only thing I would like to add, because looking at your slides, I saw that on the conventional imaging within the STEMP trial, most of the patients actually were not negative, no, not note positive. Is that correct? Uh, only partially, Arnold. Uh, yeah. About 40% of the M0 patients were note positive about 60% were no negative. Okay. okay. So quite a substantial proportion. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. I think it's time for us to go to the conclusion. I hope we, you had the opportunity to learn a lot from this uh, video session. You can uh, keep exploring the Euronco platform of the EAU if you want to learn even more on these uh, topics, prostate cancer, kidney cancer, and bladder cancer. Thank you very much. <laughs>